Welcome to the Career Medis Podcast. I am your host, Nisar Ahmed. I am the founder and editor of the blog, careermedis.com. And this is episode nine of the Career Medis Podcast. And this episode is part of the expert series. And for today's expert series episode, I am interviewing uh, Ben Austin from stopstartdo.com. Uh, I always ask my guests to do an introduction, but before that, I want to read something. Uh, this is a brief introduction of who Ben is, uh, so the audience knows uh, a little bit more. So here's my introduction of Ben. Uh, ben Austin is the founder of Stop, Start, Do, and teaches you how to be a peak performing leader by mastering your success habits. His friends call him the illegitimate love child of Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> and Bill Nye. Hey, Ben, welcome to the podcast. Nassar, it's awesome to be on, man. Thank you for having me. Uh, you, I, I want to ask you, I mean, I mean that, is a, that is one of the uh, most humorous uh, introductions I've received. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, I think everybody respects Arnold and Bill Nye. So you can't go with everybody. Like They, they, they are masters in their own field. So right. you can't go wrong with uh, both of them. So <laughs> that is... Uh, that's a that's a that's a nice introduction there. So Ben, I I always like to ask. I, even though I read something, I always like to hear, um, uh, and also I'm sure the listeners will as well. A uh, little bit from the guest, a little bit about themselves and what they do. Uh, yeah. So if you, by all means, if you can introduce yourself, that'll be great. Yeah, of course. Uh, so currently, my main project is StopStartDo.com which is all about helping people just like you and me, people who are top performers and leaders in their industry to help them master their habits. Uh, because I believe that habits are really fundamental towards our success in any endeavor. Uh, you see a while back, I realized that it's not necessarily knowing what to do being the big issue. It's uh, actually doing it is the hard part because everybody has you know something they can look up and they can figure out the answer. But how do you get yourself to actually do the thing that's going to propel you forward in your career. And that was the entire thought behind stop, start, do, you know, stop doing the things that are holding you back, start doing the things that will move you forward and then do them consistently. You know what, Ben, I, I was going to ask about your website. I love the name, right? Stop, start, do. <laughs> uh, it's very, it's, it's very obvious, it gets people's attention. It, I, I don't think, I don't think it's, um, let me take that back. It's not obvious. It's very clear. Uh, it gets people's attention and, uh, by the sounds of it, it, it helps people improve their productivity or becoming a better peak performance is what I get when I go to your website, right? Exactly. I mean, so everybody's going to have their own individual success habits that them in their career. So an artist's success habits are going to be different than a scientist, which is going to be different than a business person, which is going to be different than a thought leader or a public speaker or whatever their chosen career path is. Uh, but we all know in our own careers and whatever we do that there are certain things that move us forward. So for people like you and me, it's working on our communication skills. It's our writing. It's our ability to communicate ideas. It's our ability to really get across the thing that we're trying to get across to the people who follow our content. And anything that improves our skills in that area is going to be a success habit that's going to help us. So then the question that becomes, you know, not necessarily what to do because we have a pretty good idea of what needs to be done, but it's rather just doing them consistently enough where we build the skills so that we can achieve mastery in our field. And I guess that was kind of the whole idea behind Stop, Start, Do. You know, how do you put in your 10,000 hours of practice in the most efficient, fastest, best way possible? I think initially early on, I kind of said, you know, you could master any new habit in six days by following these principles. And that's still something I believe is true if you know how to tweak and use the, the, the principles that I talk about. Um, but for somebody who's a newbie coming into it, it's a little bit harder just because they don't have the underlying framework. They haven't gone through the process of doing it many, many times. Uh, so I, I kind of took that out of my marketing a bit, but I still really believe that any new habit that you want to have, say you want to start a writing habit or a public speaking habit or you, know, you want to start exercising or whatever that thing is for you, 
you can really build those habits in very quickly if you know how to use the triggers in your environment and you know how to reward yourself for doing the new behavior. Thanks for touching a little bit on the communication skills. I think that will be, um, I want to make that uh, the focus of our discussion today, right? How, awesome. to, how, to, how to use communication skills uh, to make yourself more promotable, right? Uh, because uh, a, a good set of the audience for CareerMatters.com are people who, who, are, who are gainfully employed. They have a position, they have a career, they want to take it to the next level. But if there is one thing that I believe might take, uh, hold them back is their communication skills. Right. And so the one thing that's that going to put them forward yeah. in their career, right? Like, because mm-hmm. across pretty much all fields, communication skills are ultimately what's going to help set you apart from everybody else. Yes, you know what, Uh, this brings up just a quick story. Uh, I used to work in recruiting uh, in the technology sector uh, a couple of years ago, and I had a brief uh, stint there. One thing I found out is there are hundreds of excellent candidates that I've come across very sound technically. They're very good at what they do, their software, their their technical skills. But one thing they all struggled with, even the feedback I got from clients, employers was, communication skills so right. that could be something that could make or break your career absolutely right yeah and i think even if those of us who have worked in technical fields the people who ultimately get promoted to those managerial and leadership positions are not necessarily the best technical ones but they're the ones who can lead others they can influence others that's usually because their communication skills are so good they're very very good at getting across their idea into your head or into whoever's head they are working with so that like, I brought up this earlier, but regardless of the industry you learn, regardless of what happens in that industry, communication skills are something that are going to help you throughout your entire career. Like you can't go wrong by working on them. Yeah, de- definitely. Right. It is. Uh, you mentioned leadership. Um, it's usually not necessarily the one who is the best practitioner of that skill set, but the one who can get others to do the job uh, in, in a cohesive manner. Right. Um, and I think the so, perfect example of that is someone like Steve Jobs, right? So he was very, well, he was pretty damn good technically, but, you know, he wasn't at the level of like a Steve Wozniak or some of his high level engineers. What set him apart from everybody else is because he could get other people to do really high level work for him. Right. That was his his genius, so to speak, his ability to be charismatic and influence others to really bring out their best, not necessarily because he was the best engineer and technologist ever. It's funny you mentioned Steve Jobs, because I was just about to ask you about Steve Jobs. And you <laughs> mentioned Because that is the first person that comes to mind. Right? It does like for a lot of people, is, too. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's a great like he can rally the troops, build on something that nobody has done before. But. There's a good chance, as you said, if you have read his biography, he was not the one who actually put everything together. He just brought the vision and the people together. And uh, that is that is communication skills at, a, I would say, at the highest level possible, right? Like what he's been able to accomplish um, to bring industries, to bring customers, to bring people together to work on a project. So now, I, of course, not a, a Steve Jobs, you're, you're talking, we're talking about the highest level so let's let's take it to the lowest uh, <laughs> simplistic uh, manner right now. Sure. So Ben, the one thing I wanted to ask is the word communication skills is very broad, right? It right. could mean a lot of things. So I wanted to ask you, what is your definition? Uh, what is the Ben Austin's version <laughs> of communication skills? You know what? For me, it's simply just getting your ideas across to the other person in a way that they understand them. And they have like one, they have a takeaway there. Like they get it. Like they're not confused about it. So communication can take a lot of different, you know, it, it can look a lot of, in a lot of different ways. You know, it can be writing, it can be speaking, it can be graphics. But if you're able to get your ideas across to the other person, you ultimately can influence them and help them or get them to, you know, uh, work for you or whatever your specific position is. Uh, so whether or not you're subordinate trying to, you know, communicate an idea to your boss, you know, if they don't understand it, if they don't get it, they're probably not going to act on it. So your ability to get that information across is like the most vital and important component that I would say of communication. Now, 
and just just wanted to follow up question to that are you referring to uh, verbal or, or is it a combination of verbal communication plus written because a lot of what's happening there today it happens in the form of emails it happens in the form of conversation uh, uh, messaging so yeah well uh, sorry to cut you off I'll, I'll jump right into it I was so excited there but um yeah everybody receives information differently so there's uh, a great book by Peter Drucker. He was like the father of the modern MBA. Um, it's called Managing Oneself. And essentially what he says is that some people are readers and some people are listeners. And you're either one or the other. And it's not likely that you're both. So your boss or whoever you're working with, chances are they are either a reader or a listener, meaning they're going to get a higher uh, level of comprehension through reading the things that you have to say versus you saying to them. And I bet even in your own career, Nassar, you could probably think of many people where you have a conversation with them and you think that they understand it and they get it. And then you walk away from it and like a day later, they don't even know what you said during the conversation. And you're like, dude, what, you know, what's going on, man? We talked about this for 30 minutes. How do you not know? And then there's probably people where you sent lots of uh -huh. emails and they don't, you, they get them and like, they just don't understand what you're saying. They don't respond back. They're not answering your questions in the email. So it's a matter of knowing what your audience, who you're speaking with, what they respond to and what their preferred mode of communication is. So like, like I was saying earlier, if you're a subordinate and you're communicating with your boss, it's really helpful to know whether or not your boss is a reader or a listener. And that way, you know, if he's a reader, you know, okay, maybe I shouldn't go in there and call him and face to face contact with uh, him or her. You know, maybe just an email would be a better way to communicate this information. So there's a huge part of that. Does that make sense? Just knowing what your audience is going to respond to. Ah, uh, so that, that's that's uh, that's a, that's a key distinction here, right, Ben? Because what what I'm what you hear what he's saying is, it's not a one shoe fits all communication skills uh, model. It's uh, you have to adopt uh, adapt, sorry, based on the the person you're trying to communicate with. Yeah, exactly. You got to be the Swiss army knife of communication. You got to have all of your different modes kind of figured out. I mean, really, if you're going to be a leader in any industry or whatever you're doing, that's kind of what you have to do. You got to be flexible. You can't just be the email guy. You can't just be the or excuse me, guy or girl. You can't just be the person who just only does one way because the people you're talking to may not get it. Yeah, that, that that's a key distinction. And I've had experience with clients, even internally, where people were one or the other, email or, or uh, get on the phone and talk to them or in person. So it's very important to really cater your communication to that particular audience. Um, yeah, that, that's a clear distinction because right off the bat, people need to understand who are listening to this is, hey, it's not about you trying to just hone your skills. It's also about the other person. Actually, it's it's about, it's more importantly about the other person yeah. than your skills. Right. You don't matter at all in the equation. Like that's kind of what I would like people to understand. Your parts in the communication means nothing. It's all about them. Okay. And I think far often or far too often we get so concerned and worried about what we look like or how we sound or if, you know, our email is good enough and things like that. But that's really not what it's about. The other person cares about them. <laughs> they don't necessarily care that much about us. They might have an interaction with us, but two seconds later, they're going back to thinking about them. So you really have to understand, like, what, you know, what does this person need in order for me to get my idea across to them? And that's one of the, I, I really like uh, the different modes of communication that are, you know, common in the internet now. We've got podcasts, we've got blogs, we've got uh, videos on YouTube. I mean, depending on your specific style of learning, you can kind of take any of those different methods and use them to its full advantage right now. That's one of the beautiful things about the information age now. Yeah, that is so true. I'm thinking about myself, right? There are, um, I listen, like I listen to some podcasts, I also read, but it is, big, I read them, it's not because they write it. It's, I, I read it because they resonate with me, right? Yeah. So I'm just putting myself in the other person's shoes right now because there's tons of information. So you and I, Ben, we are consumers as well, right? We consume information. Of course. Uh, by reading, by listening, by podcast, by watching. But we don't watch everything. We don't read everything. We just listen to those people that resonate with us. They talk to us. Right. Uh, their intention may not be to talk to us, but they somehow 
talk to us. So that's that's uh, so one thing. If I can add is, you know what, put yourself in the other person's shoes. It's not about you; it's about them. So thanks for clarifying that. Yeah, I would actually argue that any great communicator has a very very strong empathy muscle. They know what you want to hear. So you look at somebody like a Tony Robbins or a, you know a novelist that I really like, Chuck Palahniuk. They kind of know what the end reader is thinking and feeling when they're going through their content. They have already put themselves into that person's shoes, and they kind of know what that experience is going to be like for them, which is one of the reasons why their fidelity of communication is so high and why it has a strong impact on us. And like you said earlier, why it resonates with you. Yeah, uh, it, it makes sense. It makes total. It makes total sense. <laughs> um, so let's say someone listening to this, they are, they know they want to. The goal is they want to take, get, take their career to the next level. They are. Uh, let's say they are in a in a functional position. They want to move to a leadership leadership position. They want to get promoted, right? They want to move up, become a team lead or a manager. So, you 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 talked about the building blocks, right? What are some of the things that they can do? Absolutely. Uh, I, yeah. I, okay. I'll hop into this question because I love this question. So we've talked a little bit about the why right now. Now let's talk about the how. Um, one of the easiest and best ways to just get better at being a more uh, pronounced and influential speaker is just to join a club like Toastmasters, right? Because Toastmasters, uh, you know, while not a perfect organization, it gets people on stage working with other people who are interested in improving their leadership and communication skills. You're now surrounded by a group of people who have similar interests to you. And there's really no harm that's going to happen from, you know, learning how to speak in front of a group or learning how to communicate your ideas better. That's probably the easiest thing. You know, lots of times we think we need to watch a bunch of videos or read a book about communication or, you know, try to, like, learn all the different facts behind it. And while that's good, you know, there's some good things to learn there. It's way more important to go out there and actually give your brain some reference experiences to get out there and actually do it. Because that's when you're going to improve. It's not going to be through reading a book and learning the theory behind it. While the theory is good and you might get some you know, good feedback for yourself, getting out there, real-time feedback, real people, face-to-face is the absolute best way to see if your ideas are being received by other people. And uh, that's one way that I like. Another way that I like is through uh, improv or stand-up comedy like actually getting on stage (laughs) and doing something that gets you out of your comfort zone because it teaches you just to kind of be in the moment, to be present, to not think too far ahead. Because I don't know if you've ever done uh, improv comedy. You have to just kind of be in the moment. And if you're thinking too far ahead or if you're worrying about what you said in the past, your performance isn't going to be very good. Improv really teaches you to be in the moment and like really focus on your audience. And there's this really nice dynamic that happens. And uh, I think those are probably two pretty good ways for just the average person listening here to get started. Do you have anything else you'd like to add to that list? So I totally agree with both of those things. And I, I, it's, I, I was excited when you're speaking about this because I've done both. Uh, I have not done stand-up. I've done improv. I've also been uh, actively member of Toastmasters for many years. So Toastmasters helps you to become a good listener. Mm. Uh, it, it, uh, because yes it's not only about speaking I think you touched on this right? it's about the other person one thing I found out is Toastmasters uh, helps you to hone that listening skills because that's another thing uh, I want to get back to you in a bit because listening is very important uh, it's not only about talking right most people are concerned about me right. uh, concerned about doing themselves. the talk yeah. e- exactly so listening uh, improv is a, a complete opposite spectrum which is very useful as it makes you think on your feet all the time and uh, what managers or someone in leadership positions are responsible for making decisions, right? right? And that helps you make those uh, good decisions in that moment. So it it flexes that muscle. So I can totally, totally agree with, I I totally concur with both these points, but I have, I have done them myself as well. So uh, one thing I have to ask you about, um, Going back to the listening, I mentioned about listening, right? Because even improv is about listening. It is because uh, it's there is a yes and yes and dynamics. You, right. you the the whole uh, for those who are not familiar with improv, uh, I'll give you a quick. Uh, it, it's it's the whole dynamics is you don't reject what someone has given you. You say yes and, so you're listening, you're accepting it, and you're building on that, right? Right. Um, so you mentioned about house. I want to go back to listening in a little bit because. 
I don't think most people listen. <laughs> and I, or it's not something people teach, right? You, you go to university, they talk about writing, they talk about public speaking, listening. So can you, what are your, what is your experience on that? Or what are your thoughts on that? Uh, with listening in particular, yeah, I, I think most people struggle with, once again, worrying about themselves. So when they're in a conversation with somebody or they're listening to somebody else, they're worried about how do I look? You know, how am I sounding? Did what I say just now, did that sound stupid or was it good? And they're worried about what they're going to say next. But really listening is about shutting out all of that other self-talk that's happening and really focusing on what the other person is saying. And then you're asking yourself, okay, how do I build on the energy of this communication right now, this conversation, and add to it what it needs? Um, because, yeah, like I was saying, you just far too often we get so stuck in worrying about ourselves and how we look. But listening is really being focused on the other person and being genuinely interested in what they're saying and what they're trying to communicate to you. Um, what's the book? Uh, it's uh, not Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Oh, that's another good one. It's uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Uh, Dale Carnegie. Oh, yeah. yeah he says, um, you know, one of the easiest way to win friends and influence people is just being genuinely interested in the other person. And I can't tell you how well that works, just to like actually care about what the other person is saying and what they're trying to say to you. Like that's probably the easiest way to just uh, you know, encompass everything that we're talking about right now. You be genuinely interested in them and uh, all of the listening that needs to happen and their need to feel like you are hearing them, that's going to happen naturally. Yeah, definitely, right? Because everybody's trying to think of what to say next. Uh, but if you, it's, I, I used to struggle uh, with conversations as I was growing up. Now I don't, I, you know, now I just don't try to talk. You just listen and just build on that conversation. It will take you, and if there's a right energy right there, the conversation will flow itself. Exactly. Right? Yeah, I think when you're jumping in your head and you're worrying about what's going to say next, you kind of block the energy exchange that naturally would happen. Um, but, you know, if you're interested in them, it just kind of happens naturally between the two of you or the audience that you you have. Oh, but another, another point that I'd like to make. So we're talking about listening here, and we think that when we're standing in front of an audience or we're, you know, talking to somebody else, like actually saying words to them, you still need to be listening. You're still paying attention to your audience. Just because you're speaking and there's sound coming out of your mouth doesn't mean that the listening stops, right? That's just, it, it, it's still going on then. You're, you're calibrating microsecond to microsecond uh, when that conversation is happening. That's a very good point. That's a, uh, it's about getting, uh, con connecting with that audience, right? And just, just building on that energy. Yeah, uh, you mentioned stand up, and, uh, and one of the fav one of my favorite, and most people listening to this, uh, I don't know if they have heard of Russell Peters. He's a Canadian comic, and he his material is very unscripted. He just listens to the audience, gets feeds, throws it back at them. It's very popular because of that. It, it's not a scripted speech yeah. type of stand up. Yeah, so so it's interesting. I've never actually for for a moment I didn't think that even public speaking that is listening, but now it makes more sense. Yeah, I think that's ultimately what effective public speaking is. You're adapting to the needs of your audience in the moment. And the only way you do that is by listening to them. So, you know, if you say a joke and it doesn't hit, you know, <laughs> you got to understand why. You can't just keep blowing on. You know, you might have a fully scripted, you know, every word talked out presentation. But if you're just reading the words, you're not connecting with the audience. And the audience is going to feel that. They're going to feel like, you know, you're not there genuinely to share something with them. They feel like you're there just for yourself. And when they feel like that, they, they feel like they're being cheated. And they walk away from that kind of feeling yucky. It doesn't feel very good. Uh, but you and I both know people who get on stage and they have nothing. Like they might have an outline prepared, but they just talk and they communicate. And they, they take those little moments to really connect with their audience. And those are the presentations that always come out really special. I think even they talk about in Toastmasters, you know, don't write out every single word. Rather, you make your bullet points and then you talk through them. Yeah. So, so what you talk, what you're saying is not memorizing, right? It's just just build on that. 
write the outline, build on that, and talk about that. Same with co- communication skills, right? If you're in the office, you don't have a speech prepared, <laughs> right. right? You're not ta- when you're talking to your boss. It, it it has to come naturally, right? But at least you know top two or three things to talk about. Yeah, that'd pre- be pretty weird if you know I'm a manager. One of my subordinates <laughs> comes in, he's got you know two pages of typed out words, and he just sits there reading them to me. Be like, dude, you could just let me read that, and that would have the same same effect. So you know, we, we I think. Oftentimes, especially guys, we worry so much about the words that we're saying. We worry so much about the actual content of everything that we say. You know, and there's been a lot of studies about this, but, you know, kind of what they say is about, you know, 7 to 10 percent of our communication is actually the words. The rest of the 90 or 93 percent is everything else. It's our body language. It's our tonality. It's our energy that we're bringing into the room. It's all those other things, not necessarily the words that we say. So the person listening to this right now, they may remember a few things from this conversation, but they'll really remember how we make them feel. They're not going to remember, you know, the couple thousand words that we say during this uh, this conversation. They're, <laughs> they're going to remember how they feel and then a few takeaways. I'm so glad you brought that up, right? The whole, uh, once people get caught up in the communication, the words, uh, your, how you say it. No, no, actually not, sorry. They, they get caught up in what you're saying, the words, mm. should I use complex words? So uh, so th- that's interesting. Did you say 7% is only verbal? Is it? Right. I mean, did who, I hear who knows what the actual number is, but the studies that were done, you know, 30 to 40 years ago that have been, you know, referenced in thousands of different books, they all say about that same thing. Hmm. That that is very interesting because words something you can learn, right? And uh, you're talking about emotions, you're talking about voice, you're talking about body language. Um, is that learnable as well, Ben? Is that something like let's say someone has uh, historically been a shy, introverted person, um, and how does yeah? So is that possible to change the dynamics if 93% is nonverbal? Is that fixable? Of course, it's called communication skills for a reason. These are all skills that are 100% learnable, and everybody's going to have their own unique brand of communication, a unique way that sounds good for them and it works for them. And it's just a matter of, you know, learning how that, you know, what that is for you. So, you know, I would actually encourage people not to be worried too much about their body language and worried about their tonality and worried about all those other things, because when you have the underlying beliefs and frameworks already established, like, uh, I'll back up here for a second. So, Nassar, during this conversation, you know, my intent here is just to have a really fun, you know, informative conversation with you. I want to collaborate with you and just make this really awesome. Okay, that's my intent. Mm-hmm. And because that's my intent, my tonality takes on a certain uh, path after <laughs> because my intent is that. And my the way I'm speaking, my uh, rapidity, the staccato, everything about my voice is taking on the tone because my intent is very clear. You know, I just want to engage with you and just have a really fun conversation with you. But if I'm worried, if I look cool enough, you know, I'm, what I'm saying good enough, it's going to sound different. You're going to notice that you're going to feel that there's something different about my communication. You may not know exactly what it is, but it's just going to feel a little bit off for you. So what I would encourage people to do, just get your intention aligned. So you know what you want out of the conversation. Don't worry about you so much. Worry about how you can make, any, make it a great conversation or a great uh, article or whatever you're doing for the end user, the person reading it or listening to you. You mentioned, uh, Ben, very briefly about the book Seven Habits uh, of Highly Effective Be- uh, People, Stephen Covey. He talks about begin, begin with the end in mind. It's one of the principles or one of the habits. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, exactly, right? So going back to uh, not worry about in the moment, but what your outcome, what, what do you want it to be? Let's say you're speaking to your manager, you're trying to get that interview, uh, you're doing an interview for a promotion or a client, uh, have something. In it. So am I hearing that it's good to have an idea of what you want out of the call and things like tonality and body language will take care of itself? Absolutely. And, you know, intention doesn't necessarily have to be like, you know, you want something out of the other person or, you know, you need to have this. You're trying to get this goal achieved. Sometimes your intention could be, hey, I'm just here to chat. You know, hey, I'm just here to have fun or, hey, I'm just here to have a nice conversation. It doesn't necessarily need to be something that's like, you know, goal driven and super outcome oriented. It could be something very light and fun as well. But I think as long as you have that in mind, a lot of these other behaviors are just going to kind of manifest themselves 
naturally. But, you know, on the other hand here, if somebody has really poor posture or they, um, you know, are not very animated, you know, specifically like with technical guys, this is a huge, huge issue is that they think that they're being really animated and out there and they're using great body language. But to everybody else, <laughs> it looks like they're a stone. Like it looks like they're not moving at all. It looks like they're not engaging. But to them, it really feels like they're putting themselves out there. So it can be useful. I'll go back on my previous statement and actually try to learn some of this stuff because at the end of the day, you can correct it. And, you know, when you do get the underlying frameworks, your intentions down, a lot of this other stuff will take care of itself and you kind of know when you're falling off. So like if I'm talking with you, you know, we're face to face and uh, we're sitting at a table and I got my head in my hands and I'm slouched down or my arms are crossed or I'm leaning back. It's going to communicate to you that I'm not really interested in this conversation. I'm bored. Um, and, you know, I'm probably, well, I should say I, I lost my train of thought there, but I don't even know where I was going with that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh no, I, I understand. It's it's uh, and people can pick up on that, right? Yeah. If, if when you so it's it's good once you have that mindset, people are able to pick up on that aspect of what you're speaking about. So yeah, I, I know I think you're going in the right direction. Yeah, I just lost my train of thought completely there. <laughs> that happens sometimes. No worries, no worries. Um, so you you talked about the why uh, why it is important um, and how you gave us some uh, tidbits uh, of. In your experience, let's say once, I want to go back to you because maybe it's always good to hear personal experience. Uh, some of the things that you mentioned that you have applied, how has that benefited you? Uh, well, I mean, just in terms of sheer outcome here, uh, job promotions, you know, getting pay raises, being able to share my ideas with thousands of people online. I mean, it's all of those things. Yeah, I mean, I've got one story that comes to mind. I was in an interview a few years ago after joining Toastmasters, and it was supposed to be, you know, 20 minutes with the human resources person. I was supposed to meet their lead engineer for another 20 minutes, and then I was supposed to meet their CEO just for another 20 minutes just to say hi. And it ended up being like a seven-hour interview with their CEO. It was just he, wow. he and I just bullshitting, chatting, uh, just really connecting and enjoying the, the conversation such that we kind of lost track of time. And I was there from 8 a.m. till, you know, 3.30 in the afternoon, <laughs> like without a wow. break at all. I mean, and I was just going to say, like, that's kind of like the power of being able to do these types of things in a professional setting, you know, where somebody of a $50 million company kind of forgets the rest of their day and just wants to spend that entire time talking with you. And that's the end goal for many people, right? Uh, so yeah, well, all the things you put in the effort, the results will come. Exactly. And especially if you're a technical person or you, you work in a technical field, the communication skills are very, very rare in those industries. And if you can be one of those people that stands out and is really a, a great communicator and you know how to get your ideas across, you're going to be way more successful than other people, even if the other people maybe are better technically than you, but because you can get other people to buy into your ideas you are ultimately going to be the one who has the most influence in those situations. So there's really no downside at all to learning these skills. Yeah, I, it reminds me of I, the point I made at the beginning, right? It's, it's uh, Everybody looks the same when you're applying for a position because you, if the communication skills is something that is breaking or making the deal, if you build on these skill sets, you easily stand out. Exactly. Yeah. among everyone else, right? So it, it all comes down to that. Uh, and I, the reason I ask that question, Ben, is same same thing here, right? It's, it's I was not expecting you to talk about Toastmasters or improv or even listening. Uh, I, these are things someone else suggested to me. I tried it and I see the benefit in my career as well. So uh, so there's people listening. There's two. It's, it, we both are living testament of how the applying these principles could definitely uh, help uh, uh, enhance their careers. Exactly. I mean, if you want to get promoted in your industry or in your company, I think the most foundational skill that you can have is the ability to get your ideas across to other people. And however you go about doing that, you know, whether that be the working on your, your speaking ability with other people or working on your ability to write. I think we haven't talked enough about that during this episode, uh, but the ability to write a good email 
is such a lost art these days. I mean, I'm sure to start, you probably see so many just awful, terrible emails where you don't even know what the other person is saying to you. And you're like, what do I do with this? <laughs> where do I begin with this? I don't even know where to begin. Um, so really knowing how to get your ideas across in a very concise, specific, actionable way for other people is also really going to help. Um, so maybe we should dive into that a little bit. Do you have any ideas about a, a way for a person to improve their writing skills? Uh, you know what? It's it's so it's amazing that you and I are so much in sync because I was just going to ask you that. I right? <laughs> spend a lot of time on communication skills, and that's a great segue, right? And uh, when you're talking about emails, I myself am guilty of that. I always believe that I can improve my email, whether it's internally or externally. Um, it's it's so. I'm thinking one thing that has really helped me, uh, and this may apply. To everyone, and I'm, I'm look, Ben. Give me your thoughts. One of the things, I, one of the reasons I started writing uh, a blog, writing on LinkedIn, is just uh, it helps me to crystallize my thoughts. Yeah. Makes it, uh, it gives me a structure. And even going back to Toastmasters, writing speeches, right? So whole process. It's it's a lost art. Actually, I, I shouldn't say it's a lost art. B- before, many people did not have to write. Now, I think it's becoming a necessity where you right. have to write emails, uh, communication letters. So for me, that has helped me. So I always encourage everyone, no matter what you do, even if you're just in school, about to graduate, you're working in IT, engineering, uh, you are a practitioner, you're in the healthcare field, start writing. Yeah. Because it'll force you, uh, and I, I can guarantee from my personal experience and the people I've spoken to, once you start writing, you will fall in love with it. It, it is something that you would like to do again and again. Uh, so that's my personal experience. Do you have any insights into that? Uh, you, you're a blogger. You write a lot as well. So uh, I'm curious to hear. Yeah, I definitely agree. So for the person listening, if you don't have a blog already, it's very, very easy to go to WordPress.org or one of the other free blogging platforms and get something for free. You don't need to go all in and spend hundreds of dollars getting your perfect website and designing a logo and doing all that. Sometimes just starting very, very simple is just an easy way to go. Or you just post your ideas on Facebook or Medium, or some sort of platform that already exists. And what I would encourage people to do is just spend, you know, half hour each day, write 500 words. That's it. Just spit out 500 words. Doesn't matter if they're good or bad, but really get in the process and the habit of doing this. So every single day you're sitting down for a little bit and you're just writing out your thoughts, whether that be your workout for the day or whatever you did or some, 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 something that gets you to communicate your ideas in a very, structured, understandable way. Because one thing that we see a lot with people who are not so great communicators is that you're reading their letter or their blog post or whatever their, you know, their text is. And it's like the movie Memento. You don't even know like what's going on. It's just jumping all over the place. (laughs) Nothing is structured. You're like, dude, I don't even know what this guy is saying right now. None of this makes sense. (laughs) You know, they might be asking a question, but there's not, there's not proper punctuation. And until you go through the process of trying to get other people to understand your ideas via text, you're not going to improve. Um, So I I do agree. Blogging is a great way to improve your communication writing skills. Try to think, is there any other way? I mean, you can certainly take classes for this type of thing, but really like we're talking about for uh, oral communication skills, doing it is the best way to learn. Doing it, putting your ideas and thoughts out there seeing if other people are responding to them and if they're interacting with them and if they like it. Uh, that's probably the best way that I can think of. Do you have anything else to add? Well, I think on a personal communications, building your communication skills, uh, something th- that is a great way. Uh, I have a question for you and uh, you mentioned email, right? So uh, blogging is a great way to get your brand out there. It's a great habit. It sharpens your comprehension skills. You learn a lot. Uh, you mentioned email. Most people, as we talked about, even, I, I, hey, listen, I can agree. I also, I think I suck at emails as well. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what are some of the things they can do? Uh, let's, uh, I mean, if we can focus on email because a lot of business, everything is done on emails. Uh, what are some of the things someone can do on it? Short sentences with a lot of periods. People get these long emails and they're like one big long block of text with run on sentences without proper punctuation. Um, And honestly, those take a really long time to read. You have to sit there and read them out, you know, 
as if you know you were reading them out loud in order to understand them. That's a really awful thing to do to the the person or the end user who's reading your thing. Use short sentences, lots of spaces in between. Reduce their eye strain. Don't make the person squint and try to figure out, you know, see all the different lines of your text together. That's probably the easiest thing you can do. And anytime you can say the same thing in one sentence as opposed to one paragraph, it's going to be a lot more effective because now the person who's reading your email knows, okay, I only have to focus on this one sentence, not this other, you know, 700 words of pure blah that you don't even understand. I mean, I get things like that all the time. People will give me long blocks of text and there'll be a question stuffed in there without actual punctuation. And I don't respond to it. And they come back a few days later, like, Hey, you never responded to my question. I'm like, you didn't ask one. <laughs> How am I supposed to know, <laughs> you know, when you structure a question without, you know, using, you know, a word like what or how at the beginning of it, and there's no punctuation at the end. Like, how am I supposed to know? Uh, so short sent sentences, lots of periods, spaces in between, keep it short. Those are, those are great points. And uh, what I'm do, going to do, Ben, is uh, I always write a summary of the interview. So I'll definitely break that down the emails because uh, I, I can I can start using it tomorrow when I get back to work or even when I write my emails because I'm guilty as charged here. Lots of punctuation, lots of spaces. Um, the way you talk and the way you write are two different things. I think we, that is one of the first things we cover, covered, right? Like we talked about the distinctions. Right. Uh, but when you're having a conversation, so you can talk, you can build on that. But when you're sending an email, you don't know what the other person is doing. That person might have, might be waiting in a line, checking the email on a phone, might be on a train, uh, might be just tired at the end of the day. You never know because when you're talking to someone, you're talking to them right, right away. Right. But email, you never know when they are reading it. So it's, uh, I think, you make it very, very simple. Uh, those are great, great uh, points. Cool. I just came up with them right now, but that's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of what I use. <laughs> Even in my blog post, people will see very short sentences, lots of spaces, lots of punctuation, uh, just because, excuse me, people are busy now. They don't have time to spend, you know, digesting your email and figuring out every little thing that you're trying to say from it. And if you can get your ideas across fast, quickly, uh, you know, with very clear outcomes and objectives from your communication, you're going to be a hell of a lot more effective. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, so, Ben, uh, people listening to this, uh, I mean, you've given lots of great insights. I, like I said, I'm going to summarize everything. I've learned a lot uh, that I can use myself. And that's one of the reasons I do this podcast, because I, it, I have a selfish motive. I want to learn as well, right? right? Yes, the audience will learn. So after listening to this, if people wanted to get in touch with you and they wanted to ask you more questions, uh, what, is, what, what, what is the best way to get in touch with you? Yeah, the best way to get in touch with me is go to stopstartdo.com, sign up for my email newsletter. Currently, I'm giving away a resource guide which describes a few different personality tests, which actually I think are really helpful for those of us who are interviewing or need to be able to describe our specific strengths and weaknesses. Um, so that can be very helpful for somebody who is trying to get promoted. And uh, with that subscription to my email newsletter, you get access to me via email. So if anybody wants to have a conversation, you'll get access to me via email, sign up for the newsletter, and uh, that'd be the best way of going about it. Yeah, thanks. I'll definitely add those as links at the uh, end as well. Uh, so the final Thing I wanted to ask you, Ben, is any last words? Is there anything that uh, you wanted to add or say to the audience? One thing that came up when you were talking is that another great way to improve your communication skills is to start a podcast. This is a really advanced principle for people who don't have an existing platform. But like you were talking about earlier, you know, you're nine episodes in right now. By the time you're 20 episodes in, your level of communication is going to go up exponentially. It's going to go up exponentially again, about 50 and then 100. Then over time, you're going to be so relaxed and natural when doing this. I mean, you're going to just sound like a pro every time. <laughs> so anybody who's really interested in the verbal communication side of things, podcasting is also another good way of going about it. I totally concur with that. I One thing I learned, Ben, by recording and listening to the podcast is I used to speak very, very fast. Now I'm it makes you more aware of yourself. So I 100% uh, I agree with that as well. It, it's more advanced. I would not, re I mean, I don't know what you think. I would not recommend anybody starting out. Maybe, maybe no. they should. I don't know. But it's an advanced thing, but definitely 
definitely helps your productivity. Uh, sorry, uh, your communication skills. Uh, yeah, Ben, thanks for being a guest. I uh, appreciate the time, and uh, we learned a lot. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Asar. It was an absolute pleasure to be on the show. Thank you. Uh, thanks, folks, for listening to this episode of the Career Medis podcast. I have uh, written a brief summary of the interview with links to Ben's website uh, as part of the blog post. Uh, if you liked what you heard, feel free to subscribe to the Career Medis podcast on iTunes. And for more, more content, as always, go to careermedis.com. If you enjoyed this episode and learned something new, uh, feel free to post a comment or a review. And if you really loved it, definitely Definitely go ahead and share this episode to your network. Until next time, this is Nisar Ahmad, your host for the Career Medis Podcast. Thank you.